Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mayhem. I mean, uh, the one after. No, Nick, it's the beginning. No, it's the fourth time we're doing this. It's Britney versus. I did the same joke last time. Remember, you laughed. You said I was stupid. So I thought I'd do it. It's Britney versus Joe. It's the fourth time they're playing in a title match. Weirdly enough, though, Nick, well, not weirdly enough, it's just a fact. This is the first time it's Britney versus Joe and not Joe versus Britney. Britney's the one wearing the belt. This time going up against Joe. Joe cashing in his automatic title shot from being the champion for like a very, very, very long time last year. Uh, yeah. And uh, getting to use that benefit of uh, cashing in the title shot, going up against Brittany. Brittany does have one defense under that belt against Rue. We saw that uh, a couple months ago. But we're up for round four. Nick, yeah, welcome. Thank you for writing this one ahead of time and thoughts on the match. Uh, I'm excited, Tim. Obviously, anytime these two have proven that anytime they play each other, we're in for for a damn good match. Uh, Joe's up right now. Even though Brittany's got the title, Joe's still up 2-1 uh, as far as records go. But every single match they've played has be- has gone down to the wire. Every single match be- has been insane. Brittany's been insane. She missed two questions against Samara, showed how strong she is. What's Joe done in, in his time since uh, we saw him in his first unexpected title defense? Brittany definitely caught him off guard. Uh, having him uh, defend earlier than he thought. So I think we're, anything could really happen today, Tim. Uh, and yeah, uh, this will prove if this really is the era of Brittany or if we were just taking a short break from uh, Joe's dynasty. So I think we'll we'll find out by the end. I thought of that walking back. I was like, I'm going to call it. The Joe dynasty. dynasty. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> yes. Let's get into the match. We will start by talking to the players in the promos. Now, Joe... There's a lot of negative <clears throat> there's a lot of negative things that people might say to try and bring you down, to try and make you look like less deserving of a champion. Like the fact that you're British. I'm not gonna disagree with that one. But Brittany's even worse than that. She's Canadian. And we all know that Canadians are terrible. Uh, but in all seriousness, you have proven yourself as one of the greats. You had was it five defenses of this belt? Something yeah. like that. Brittany's you know got what? one. Yeah. Do you know what? If you'd told me at the start of the year that losing the belts to Brittany would be the least of the bad things that were going to happen to me this year, I don't know what I'd have done. But look, 2023 has been – it's a steaming pile of dog shit. But – and I've this year sucked and I've lost a lot this year. But the one thing I can get back is this title. So I'm going to put everything into it because, yeah, I need something. And I'm going to get it back. And I'm hungry. I'm determined. Nervous, as always. But Brittany is a deserving champion. There's no doubt about that. But I want this title back. I'm getting it back. Absolutely. Even if it's not today, I will get it back. Let's get it back. Hey, so we're defending the title today. Um, that's really cool. And that promo that Joe shot at the end of that match that you played against Rue was really cool. But I picked some weaknesses up. One... He was watching Ratha Khan. Ratha Khan is not why he lost the title. He should have been watching some of those YA films and remembering parents' names. Two, he was vaping and not even looking at the screen watching the movies. And three, terrible, leaving all of his movies laid across the floor that could get broken. So, again, we'll play our game. Joe will play his. Hopefully we come out on top. Let's play. Bucky is so pumped. He's making a cameo appearance yeah. uh, in the back for the for the match. He's very excited. He was telling me just before the match, Tim, yeah. the 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 Brittany Joe feud continues. Are you pumped? And I said, Don't call me Tim. That is father to you. How dare you, Nick? Any thoughts on the promos? You know, Bucky's a, a dog. <laughs> well, shit. Nick, how's round number one work? Round number one is going to work like this. There's going to be 10 questions in the realm of fandom fights. Each player is going to have 15 seconds to write down their answer. At the end of 15 seconds, we'll say pens down, at which point the players will reveal their answer and say it aloud. Each correct answer is worth one point apiece. And should any individual player get all 10 questions correct in round number one, they would receive a bonus question. Each player will have three, re- four repeats, one challenge for the entirety of this title match. Players, any questions as we get into round number one? No. Yeah. All right, then. Your first question comes in the category of Marvel. In Kingsman, the Golden Circle, after Poppy's death, Agent Whiskey surprises Eggsy and Harry by holding them up with what two kinds of weapons? 
I love whiskey. Me too. Big fan. Both the drink and the uh, person that plays this character. Oh, nice. Great. How dare you drop that news on me? Five. Four. I'll tell you in a second. Three. Okay. Two. One. Pens down. Let's go to Joe. So that's on a knife. And Brittany. Well, I said whip and lasso. Uh, I don't think we can take either guns and a whip. Is the uh, answer that we have. Put knife oh. lasso. So, yeah. Uh, your next question is going to come in the category of American spies. What actor appears in the Sum of All Fears and Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit as two different characters? Uh, apparently, it's uh, Pedro's birthday today, according to Meg. I'm, I'm weirded that she knows it just off the bat. Great, too. Like, uh. Our good friend Pedro, a good friend of the show, Pedro. Five. Hello. Four. Three, two. He's totally watching this. One. Pens down. Let's go to Brittany. Uh, Comfure. And Joe. Comfure. That is correct. So we're all tied up, both on the board. What's next? Your next question comes in the category of Planet of the Apes. In Planet of the Apes, 1968, what three-word phrase does George Taylor write in the sand while in the human pen, which Nova erases? We erase things often. Not anymore. What's up with the pen? It's a human pen. Why? From the question. Oh. Because I start, I started. Re I was really sick for a while, and I started thinking it was maybe the fumes what? from all the pens down from the marker. <laughs> Joe, I can write. And Brittany. Oh no, I put my name is. I can write is correct. So Joe takes a one point lead. It's two to one. Your next question is in the category of Star Trek. Which Star Trek film features the character character Manus? First one on the match. Second question I asked. First, first one that I flubbed. The character. The character Oba. Well, was thinking. Woe is me. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Brittany. Uh, Star Trek Beyond. And Joe. Star Trek Beyond. That is correct. All right. What's next? Your next question will come in the category of Disney animation. Your question is. What is the name of Captain Amelia's ship in Treasure Planet? Your thoughts on treasure? Um, what is treasure? Or booty, would you like, if you would prefer me to put it that way? I would prefer you to put it that way, thank you. That's fair. So your thoughts on booty? Great. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Joe. The SS Venture. Uh, and uh, Brittany. The RLS Legacy. I put that in brackets because I wasn't sure. RLS Legacy is okay. Correct. So Brittany ties it up, making it three to three. Your next question is in the category of scores and soundtracks. Your question is Who composed the score for Bumblebee? I just did the thing I hate doing when I'm yeah. editing. Uh, and it's when, like, I get ready for us to be like, your next category is scores and soundtracks. And then I pop in the question, and I just did the where I would pop in the question, but then all of a sudden the host goes, your question is. And then I have to, like, fix it. So you don't like when I say your question is? I like it. One. But it makes it difficult. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So you're going to do that the rest of the match. Okay, got it. Uh, let's go to Brittany. Dario Marianelli. And uh, Joe. Dario Marianelli. That is correct. So the score is four to four. Nick, please make my life hell. Your next question comes in the category of DC. And your question is, in the Lego Batman movie, Batman is put in jail for doing what specifically to the Joker? Oh, man. Specific specifics, am I right? Yeah. What did you specifically have for lunch? Um, I feel like we kind of skipped lunch. We had like a late week? brunch. Some pancakes. I had a breakfast burger. It was oh, very wow. good. Actually, we kind of went all out. I made pancakes, what? bacon, sausage, oh. eggs, and home fries. Two. Nice. One. Pens down. I come over next breakfast. Uh, let's go to Joe. 
Sending him to the Phantom Zone. And Brittany. Sending him to the Phantom Zone. <laughs> that is correct. Five all. Your next question is in the category of Pixar. What is the full name of the professional jazz musician who hires Joe to play with her in Soul? I'm dying, man. I see that. Are you okay? No. Maggie was making fun of me because she was like, oh, I went on with my life and you were, you're crawling around this place. Like, What oh. if you found out that you were allergic to Bucky? Ooh, it would be really sad. Five, four, three. I love him, too. One pens down. Let's go to Brittany. Dorothea Williams. And Joe. Dorothea Williams. That is correct. So we stay tied, keeping pace. What's next? Your penultimate question will come in the category of fandom quotes. Your question is, which Wizarding World film ends with the quote, something worth fighting for? One could say that um, the fandom singles belt is something worth fighting for. Because we're literally having them fight in fandom fights. Correct him. What if one video just opened up and it was just Mike and Nazario in a fist fight? Five, four, fandom fights. Three. I'd enjoy that. One, pens down, but it's just like us in a match in the background. Uh, let's go to Joe. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. And Brittany. The Order of the Phoenix. That is correct. All right. So it is seven to seven going into the final question, which is in the category of horror icons. What is the name of the security guard who writes erotic novels in his free time in Halloween H2O 20 years later? His first name? Uh, yep. First name is all we need. Uh, yesterday, I went back. Uh, I was feeling nostalgic because I was sick and stuff. And I watched uh, Knights of Ren versus Some Like It Hoth. Ooh, at fun. one point, uh, Koho was hosting and he said, the score is this. And the macaw went, um, that's not what I have. And I was like, I'm show my daughter this in a few years. It's going to be great. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, yeah. One, pens down. Let's go to Brittany. I said Ronnie. And Joe. Frank. Ronnie is correct. So Brittany takes the one point lead coming out of round number one, but a very close game. Eight to seven. Now, you have. That's what I have, Tim. All four repeats and challenges intact for both players. Nick, let's get into round number two. How is that going to work? Round number two is going to work like this. It is the wheel round. We have a wheel with 10 fandom categories on it. No spinners or opponent's choice per request of the champion. Each player will get a spin at the wheel. If they like what they spin the first time, they can keep it. If not, they can choose to spin again, but they will be forced to keep what they spin the second time. You'll get five questions in the chosen category, each worth two points apiece. And be on the lookout as stealing is available in round number two. Unless you like to check down the multiple choice, in which case it'll only be worth one. <laughs> and be on the lookout of stealing is available in round number two. Your categories are wheel today are going to be read to you by Tim. I was like, I didn't say something. <laughs> the categories are James Bond, YA, Star Trek, Pixar, Marvel, DC, DreamWorks Animation, Star Wars, Law and & Order, and Scores and Soundtracks. So, uh, Brittany, you're in the lead. Would you like to spin first or defer to Joe? I was like, maybe he's not going to mention point value here. Um, Joe wants to spin first. Do we want to let him spin first? Um, I kind of want to go first. What do you think? Hey, I, hey, I trust that. I'm fine with that. I mean, there's, right. we can spin again if we don't like what we get. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's go first. We'll take first. All right. This is uh, your first spin, Brittany. It lands on Pixar. Not bad. Um, yeah. Kind of want to spin again. Okay. Then we're going to spin again. Okay. This is what you are stuck with. And it lands on scores and soundtracks. Okay. All right. We're through. Yeah. All right, Nick, will you please give Brittany her questions in the category of scores and soundtracks? Gladly. Brittany, are you prepared for your questions in the category of scores and soundtracks? Yes. All right, your first question. Which MCU film features the song Supersonic Rocket Ship? Avengers Endgame. 
That is correct for two points. Your second question. What punk rock band recorded the song The Future Has Arrived for Meet the Robinsons? I will go down to multiple for that, please. All right, your multiple choice options are, is it A, All Time Low, B, Panic at the Disco, C, The All-American Rejects, or D, Fallout Boy? Five. Four. Uh, repeat the options, please. Your options again are A, All Time Low, B, Panic at the Disco, C, The All-American Rejects, or D, Fallout Boy? Go with C. That is correct for one point. Great multiple choice options, Nick. Fantastic. Thank you. <clears throat> Your third question. Brad Fidel has composing credits on how many Terminator films? Two. That is correct for two points. Your penultimate question in scores and soundtracks. Who composed the score for The Hunt for Red October? Basil Poldoris. I apologize if the last name's not perfect. <laughs> that is correct for two points. Okay. <laughs> Phonetically, I'm good with that. Oh, yeah. That's how I'd have pronounced it. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> All right, Bernie, your final question in scores and soundtracks. What is the name of the song sung by Enya for the Fellowship of the Ring? May it be. And that is correct for two more points in the sweep of scores and soundtracks. Damn. Uh, so Brittany gets her total up to 17. We're going to bring in Mr. Holtzman and the wheel for Joe's spin. Joe, your first spin lands on Marvel. How are you feeling? There's worse out there. There really there's, is. There's um, definitely worse. Um, I want to say, as much as you missed the Marvel question in round one, that question now cannot be asked. Yeah, and, and annoyingly, I, I, had, I literally had lasso and gut. Uh, I think it's a knife. So Because she left the door open. If you go 10, then you're tied. Do you think you can do 10 yeah. Marvel, or do you want to go for something else? Yeah, I think... If I'd have spun first, I'd have spun away from Pixar and probably would have done worse. So I think, yeah, we can stick with Marvel. All right, let's stick with Marvel. Yeah. All right. Then, Joe, I will be giving you your questions in the category of Marvel. Are you ready? Sure. All right, your first question in Marvel. A young girl is referred to as the treasure in which Marvel film? Electra. That is correct for two points. Also a weird fucking thing to say, but uh, your next question, Joe. Who plays FBI agent Simon Stroud, who is searching for Morbius in Morbius? Tyrese Gibson. That is correct for two points. I guess that's not coming up in filmography then. <laughs> your next question. <laughs> How do the prison guards attempt to kill Cletus Cassidy to carry out his death sentence when Carnage first manifests in Venom? Let there be Carnage. Lethal injection. That is correct for two points. I apologize. I'm Bucky trying to yell the answer to you. <laughs> really inappropriate. Uh, your next question, Joe. What is the first country that the Silver Surfer goes through in his descent onto Earth in Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer? Japan. That is correct for two more points. And your final question in the category of Marvel. What year does Logan travel back to in X-Men, Days of Future Past? 1973. That is correct for two more points, and we clean sweep. So, Nick, we are all tied up at 17. Indeed we are, Tim. How's round number three going to work? Round number three is going to work like this. It is the filmography round. Each player will be asked three questions valued at one point, two point, and three points. The question will give two clues pointing to a particular fandom actor or actress. Should the players get the correct fandom actor or actress, they will receive the concurrent point value. Uh, any questions we get in round three? 
All right, uh, Brittany, uh, you are the champion, so you can decide. Do you want set one or set two? Uh, two, please. Set two? Okay, so uh, Nick, would you go ahead and give Joe his questions in set one? Gladly, Joe, are you prepared for your questions in set one? Sure. All right, your one-point question. Who plays a Star Wars royal ruler and a DC revolutionist? Natalie Portman. That is correct. For one point. Your two-point question. Who plays a sci-fi icon's war hero and a Planet of the Apes human ally? Jason Clark. That is correct for two points. And Joe, your three-point question. Who plays an American spy's Irishman and a Wizarding World wizard? Richard Harris. That is correct for three big points and a clean sweep of the filmography round for Joe. All right, Brittany, I will be giving you your questions in the filmography round. Are you ready? Yeah. Your one-pointer. Who plays an MCU dead brother and a Marvel teenage hero? Repeat the question. All right. Your first repeat. Who plays an MCU dead brother and a Marvel teenage hero? Okay. <laughs> Aaron Taylor Johnson. That's correct for one point. Your two point question. Who voices a Disney animated wife and plays a law and order sister? Gabrielle Union. That is correct for two points. And your three-pointer. Who plays a YA vampire and a victim of Freddy Krueger? Kellen Lux. That is correct for three big points. Nick, we are still tied up 23 to 23. So we're going to move into round number four. Nick, how is that going to work? Round number four is going to be the deep cut round. We have another wheel with uh, eight slices on it with eight different fandom movies representing eight different fandom categories, each chosen in one way or another by the players uh, playing in today's match. Uh, each uh, question will be worth two points apiece. We will ask five in total. Uh, and each question has been written at a deep cut value. Uh, any questions as we get into round number four? Nope. Great. Yeah. Right. What's on the right. wheel, Tim? The movies on the wheel are The Lion King, The Matrix, Star Wars The Force Awakens, Spider-Man 2, Mission Impossible 3, Freddy vs. Jason, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and Spectre. So uh, this is the first spin for the deep cut round. And it's going to come from Spectre. So, your question in the film Spectre. What specifically does the pilot of the helicopter pull from a compartment to try and use as a weapon against Bond during the fight above Mexico City? Did I even need to finish reading the question? You didn't, Tim. <sighs> but you did, and thank you. Thank you for writing it, Nick. Of course. Five. Pleasure. Four. Slow work week. Two. One. Pens down. Let's go to Brittany. Flare gun. And Joe. Flare gun. Both are correct for two points. So we will bring back up the wheel and get the next spin for the next question. It's going to come from Mission Impossible 3. Nick, would you go ahead and read the Mission Impossible 3 question? Gladly. Your question for Mission Impossible 3. What was the name of the professor that told Benji about the anti-god? I think Bucky might be the anti-god. I believe it. <laughs> you didn't like that one? Speaking of God, right before this, I watched Bruce Almighty. Great film. Fantastic. Great film. It's good. Five. Not, only not as good, but a little underrated. Two. One, pens down. Let's go to Joe. Mr. Wickham. 
and uh, Brittany. I said Dr. Wickham. We can take both. He says Dr. Wickham, but I think both are fine. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. So both get the two points. All right. So we'll bring back in the wheel for the next spin. Your next question is going to come from the Matrix. All right. Guys, your question in the, uh, the movie The Matrix. How long had Neo been learning? How long had Neo been learning combat training when Morpheus asks him to show him? Tim, you said how long, and they were they were right. So I think. Yeah, that's fair. How long had Neo been learning? I did think you were going another way with it first. To be honest. <laughs> that's, no, it's correct. I just it was a weird sentence, but it's it makes sense. It adds I up. Just, I disagree. I think it's a totally normal sentence. Oh, okay, good. Bye. Go say it to someone on the street. Go say it to your girlfriend. One. Heads down. Let's, let's see what she says. Uh, let's go to Brittany. Ten hours. And Joe. Ten hours straight. He's a machine. Ten hours is correct. Nick, we're still tied up. Here's yeah. the next uh, spin. Ah, <laughs> Lion. All right. Yeah, no, I got it. All right, cool. <laughs> Your question in the Lion King. What color bug does Timon call the little cream-filled kind? These are Cody's favorite types of questions. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm aware. From his fourth favorite film. Fourth. I would just want to point out, I, I needed to check the stats, but I think whenever these two play, we most of the time get a bunch, get all different movies. Five. Yeah, we're four or five right now. Three, two, one. Depends down. Let's go to Joe. Blue. And Brittany. Blue. Blue is correct. So, <laughs> uh, the look of disdain on Brittany's face. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we're still tied up as we get into the final spin of the deep cut round. Did we do it? Did we do it? it? Spider Man 2, baby. <laughs> we did it. That's crazy. All right, guys. Your question in the film Spider-Man 2. What was the name of the caterer at MJ's wedding? Great question. Thank you. Oh, great, great movie, frankly. It's okay. What? I kind of despise the character mentioned. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Depends down. Yeah, she's crazy. Uh, let's go to Brittany. I said Deborah. And Joe. Deborah. Deborah is correct. So I am sweating. Uh, we are all tied up for the last 17 hours. And it's, uh, what is this, 33 to 33, Nick? Yeah, that's what I got, Tim. All right. We're going to get into round number five. It's the betting round. Nick, how's it going to work? It's the betting round. It's the normal round number three. We're going to have five more questions in the realm of fandom fights. Once the players hear the category, they can bet anywhere between zero and two points on the question. If they get the question correct, they will gain those points. If they get the question incorrect, they will lose those points. We will play until someone is mathematically eliminated or we have reached the end of the match. Players, any questions as we get into round number five? <laughs> All this right. first one ought to be interesting, Tim. Your first question is in the category of... It's everyone's favorite. It's fandom quotes. Let's get back. Starting with Brittany. Two. And Joe. Zero. All right. Your question in the category of fandom quotes. Which Planet of the Apes actor said the quote, it was a virus created by scientists in a lab. You can't honestly blame the apes. I have the sniffles still. I don't. I thought I'd be better by the end of this match, but I don't. I'm not. But you don't? I, I'm so fucked up. Sorry. It's all this water. Not enough Miller Lite. Five. Four. Three. Repeat, please. All right, that is your second repeat. Which Planet of the Apes actor said the quote, it was a virus created by scientists in a lab. 
You can't honestly blame the apes. That's a shirt you wear a lot. Big fan of it. I won it when I first, or I wore it when I first uh, won the title there. It says Ace Front True Believers. It's a oh, good nice. Post there. Nice. Yeah. Me and, my, uh, me and Anna were talking, and we think that her grandma might have dated Stanley. Interesting. Five. Four? Probably not. They were, they were pretty loose similarities. Depends, <laughs> John. We're going to start with Joe, who met Zero. Jason Clark. And Brittany. Jason Clark. Both are incorrect. The answer was Harry Russell. No. I was I was between those two as well. I was between those two. So Brittany will lose two points and go down to 31. Uh Joe takes the lead, staying at 33. Is that what you have, Nick? That's what I have, Tim. What's the next category? Next category you can bet points on is Star Trek. Let's get bets, starting with Joe. Two. And Brittany. Okay, Nick, what's the question in Star Trek? Your question is, what name does Kirk call a Starfleet cadet in the bar, which Kirk is later called by the same person while being arrested on the Enterprise in Star Trek 09? I love you. <laughs> I got to put them in. Good. At least we know what we're doing. It's not like we're hosting Melee and we're like, uh, oh, God, no, if I like had a Melee question, they were like, in what movie? I'd be like, five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Brittany. Cupcake. And Joe. Cupcake. Both are correct. 33 to 35. The next category you can bet points on is the MCU. Let's get back starting with uh, Joe. Two. And Brittany. Two. Okay, your question in the category of the MCU. Which MCU film features the main villain actually gaining eternal life that they didn't have at the beginning of the film? Sounds like a drag. That's okay. Um... Although... I've been told the Miller High Life might Ooh, do that. I only drink the light. Um, too heavy on my stomach. Do you not like the High Life? It's it's just heavy. I can't I can't drink eight of them like I like to. You know, I kick back on a Wednesday night. Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. One. That's going to be Britney's third repeat. Which MCU film features the main villain actually gaining eternal life that they didn't have at the beginning of the film? You're telling me that on a Wednesday night, you don't just kick back with like eight beers, a couple tequila shots, and maybe like a taco and watch YLS? Okay. No. Okay. I'm not doing fine, man. I'm all right. That's a joke. I hate tequila. But I love Miller Lite. Five, four, three. Repeat. That is going to be Britney's final repeat. The question again Which MCU film features the main villain actually gaining eternal life that they didn't have at the beginning of the film? What's your, uh, you drink a lot of beer. Well, not a lot, but you drink beer. Yeah, you drink beer. Big fan. Did you drink any green beer this, uh, Past no, I, I stuck to uh, the Guinness, and then um, oh, that's right. This thing I began back in into blueberry beers, and I like uh, pouring the blueberry beer into a cup blueberry. and some blueberries in blueberry. Five. I hate fruit flavored beers, but blueberry. Big fan. The question. That's going to be Joe's first repeat. Which MCU film features the main villain actually gaining eternal life that they didn't have at the beginning of the film? Uh, Maggie has been on a blueberry kick for the entire time I've known her, actually. Uh, she's also been really into grapes lately. Bucky wants to eat them, uh, but it would not gain him eternal life. It would kill him, I think. Is that correct? Yeah. That's correct. Apparently dogs can't eat grapes. Oh, well. Toxins and stuff. Oh, I, I would think it would be a choke. Five, four, three, maybe that too. One. Pens down. We're going to go to Joe first. Thor, Love, and Thunder. 
And we're going to go to Brittany. Doesn't matter. I said Bart Love and Thunder too. You're right. It doesn't matter because uh, that's incorrect. Uh, but even if you had gotten it correct, it still wouldn't have mattered. Uh, the answer is Doctor Strange. The first Doctor Strange film. So, Nick scores 33 to 31. Is that what you have? Yep. Okay. What's the next category, Nick? God, I hate using pen. All right. Your pen ultimate category you can bet points on is Law and Order. Let's get bets starting with Brittany. Two. And Joe. I'm going to take a risk. Zero. All right. Here's the sitch. If Brittany hits this, we move on to the final question. If Brittany misses the question, Joe will regain the title. Nick, what is the question in Law and Order? The question is, what specific kind of location do Riggs and Butters first tell Roger Murtaugh that Butters is the father of Murtaugh's future grandchild in Lethal Weapon 4? I think I'm going to start calling you Butters. Okay. Can you start calling me Margarine? <laughs> sure. That's the Australian thing. Isn't that just like a fancy name for butter? Kind of, yeah. What am I thinking of? Vegemite? Ooh. I think I was thinking of Ooh Vegemite. Or you could start calling me, I can't believe you're not butter. Z Five, four, three, two, one. Fed's down. We'll go to Joe who bet zero. Dentist's office. And Brittany. Dentist's office. That is correct. We are all tied up. 33 all. One question remaining. And the category is Worlds of DC. Let's get bets. Starting with Brittany. Two. And Joe. Two. All right, Nick, here's the situation. Both players hit. Both players miss. We're going yep. to sudden death. Correct. But if one player hits while the other misses... That player will be the champion. Correct. Your question in the category of Worlds of DC. Who is the first member of the Suicide Squad to kill someone at the Rebel hideout where they believe they are rescuing Rick Flagg in the Suicide Squad? Not to be confused with Suicide Squad. Because without the the, it is not cleaner. It's quite dirtier, actually. Is that the line? It's cleaner? I don't know what you're talking about. The social network. Drop the, the, the. Oh. Oh, okay. Four. I remember that. Three, two, repeat one. Question. All right, that's going to be Joe's second repeat. Who is the first member of the Suicide Squad to kill someone at the Rebel Hideout? where they believe they are rescuing Rick Flagg in The Suicide Squad. Bucky is running zoomies. As they say. Zoom, zoom, zoom. What was that from? What did, where did I just pull that? I don't know. Was that Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century? I don't know what that is. Five. I think it was. Four. Three. Two. Repeat the question. One. That is Joe's third repeat. Who is the first member of the Suicide Squad to kill someone at the Rebel hideout where they believe they are rescuing Rick Flagg in the Suicide Squad? I'm stressed. I know my water bottle is shaking because I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm, my knees are, I'm, I'm, I'm tapping. <laughs> I'm, I'm losing it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We're going to go to Joe first on this one. King Shark. And Brittany. Sun death, King Shark. We're going to sudden death. King Shark is the correct answer. All right, Nick, so one repeat left for Joe. Both challenges are intact. It's 35 all. We're going into sudden death. Uh, so the first person to miss while the other hits, person who hits is the winner. Any questions from the players? No. All right. Then your first question in sudden death. Which YA character said the quote, anybody can kill anybody, even a president, 
You just have to be willing to sacrifice yourself. Has this ever happened? To me? No, the, the sudden death in the title match. Um, I would say yes, but I don't know. Couldn't think of it. Maybe Rizzy and Scully? Oh, maybe. Maybe. Five, four, three, two, Good one. Question. All right, that's going to be Joe's final repeat. Which YA character said the quote, Anybody can kill anybody, even a president. You just have to be willing to sacrifice yourself. Yeah, it did happen. In I thought so. It was only um, like, it, I, but yeah. Oh, it was the, uh, it was the uh, I know exactly what question it was now, too. I can yeah. think. It was a bullshit question. I'm not going to lie. I wrote it. It was, it was a bad question, but Great. Congrats, congrats to Scully. It was just, it was a rough question. Four. Oh, that's right. Three, two, one, pens down. Brittany. I said coin. And Joe. Finnick O'Dea. Both incorrect. We were looking for Gale. Gale. Oh. Okay. So you're on right franchise. What's next, Nick? Uh, your next question in sudden death. Who plays the villainous Nathaniel Burke in Steel? Thoughts on steel, not the film, but the object. Uh, useful. Yes, I would agree. We were talking about booty earlier. Oh, yeah. When it's steel, that's great as well. Two, one, pens down. Uh, let's go to Joe. Judd Nelson. Uh, and Brittany. Judd Nelson. That is correct. So 36 36, your next question. In sudden death, Benji attends an opera in what city in Mission Impossible Rogue Nation? He seems to be playing with some sort of rock item. Some it, sort maybe of... uh, shut up. Okay. All right. I, uh, I will. All right. All um, right. Uh, I'm just going to sit here. Give the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. One pins down. Brittany. Yeah. And Joe. Yeah. That is correct. Nick, what's next? Your next question in sudden death. What is the first name of the blue bonnet that Johnny falls in love with in Make Mine Music? Don't mind me. Just. Panic. This is your favorite film of all time, correct? You love it. Really? Love it? I actually made it. What? I didn't yeah. know that was you. Yeah. I thought you looked old. Well. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. Let's go to Joe. Harriet. And Brittany. Alice. And your winner. <laughs> and still, Fandom Fight Singles Champion, Brittany Tapley. Alice was the correct answer, Nick. Holy shit. Wow. That was, I, we, you know, we were just talking about it. Uh, <laughs> did it happen? Yes, very famously. Do you want to win or do you want to go to sudden death? Um, yep. But this, I think that was one question. This was a few. There were a couple that were close. I didn't think their matches could get better, Tim. <laughs> oh, my God. It's two and two. It's two and two. It's two and two. Oh, it's tied up, and that was... The best one we've seen them play, <laughs> which is really freaking saying something because that's insane. It was tied the whole fucking time, and then they tied the whole time. Brittany up, uh, out oh. round one by one, Joe tying it in round two, sweeping round three and round four. Um, Brittany risking a lot betting on that fandom quotes question, and when she went down, that could have been the end of it, but but coming back, I, I'm a little speechless because that was incredible, yeah. Absolutely. Let's get into post-match interviews. We're going to bring in Mr. Holtzman and uh, Joe. Oh, God, you, Joe, listen, I, I know it's it's an, it's another loss to Brittany, but like this should feel incredible because I think some people were looking at the last match and thinking like, oh, Joe's time is over. And while Brittany is going to like continue on with that belt, I think you just proved that your time is far from over. 
Um, there, <laughs> I, I thought you had it at multiple points throughout. Uh, to go into that deep into sudden death and for Brittany to come out with it, I think is incredible. And it just shows that you two are two of the best to ever play the game. Uh, I know it's it's rough uh, to be on this side of it, to be uh, on the losing side of it, but I, you, you both just made history and you'll forever be a part of that. So how do you feel about the match overall? You, you're right. You will get another chance because now that you're tied two and two, Brittany v. Joe 5, whenever it happens, is my most anticipated match ever. Um, but how are you feeling about the match, uh, Joe? I know there's got to be there's got to be at least some feeling of bittersweetness, like how good you played versus not coming out with the win. But I, I want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, that last match, like you said, I think there was both the the rust there from the post last the end, end of the last season. This match um, was very very different, and yeah, I completely agree. I think it's definitely yeah, it's the best of the the four. Um, I think if I was if I had won that last match and I was still the champion and this was the same questions going out throughout, I think I probably, as a player as a champion, I probably bet at least one in law and order and the game's done. As soon as I heard the question, I went, damn it. So I knew it. Knew it. Um, the other the thing that's really rough is that Make My Music is the only movie, Disney movie, in fandom that is not available in the UK. It's an absolute kicker. It's I think I missed one in a it knocked me out of a uh last one standing once. It's just not available here. It's the only fan of them I can't see. Well, legally. Um but that'll have to change. Um but so at the start of this match, Brittany is and has been a deserving champion. And there's no there's no hard feelings towards that. It's a rough break, but once this tournament's over and the next title picture starts, we'll see what happens. Because I got time. That's why I didn't bet anything on Law and Order because it's still it's still new. It is what it is. But Brittany deserves it. Congratulations to Brittany. It's just it's it's a rough one to take because it was in my hands. Yeah, yeah. I think what this match has shown is that last match being as I'm going to say far apart as though it wasn't still down to the wire, but as far apart as it was, was a one-time thing. Like these matches get closer and closer and better and better. And both of them, like, I'm sure if we look at the accuracy of these mat of today, they hit about the same, if not the same, it was an insane match through and through. Um, Joe came back with a vengeance um, and showed that he is still absolutely capable of hanging in there. There's going to be a fifth match. We can guarantee you that. And when Joe comes back, be ready. So, yeah, we had this whole summer tournament to sort of watch through and watch other matches and train that way. Um, so I just said, a few years ago, I had a match that went very badly against one Robert Butt. Um, got knocked out. Cody definitely remembers it. But when that match ended, I went away going, well, I can I I've got three options here. I can either go, maybe this isn't for me, step away. I can say, eh, I still have fun playing this game, so let's just have fun. Or I get to this. So Brittany's shown that the benchmark I set at the end of last season when I beat David has been surpassed. So it needs to be surpassed again. I was going to say, I imagine that means that I know what your next goal is. Because, yeah, no, Joe, you and Brittany both have proven that anybody can reach this level. It, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of hard work. But, like, from where the two of you started to where the two of you are now, You've both been setting benchmarks higher and higher and higher. Um, and you you two are the two people that everyone's been chasing. I think in the future when people talk about this, uh, you and Brittany will never not be mentioned uh, at the same time. Uh, you've set incredible things uh, for, for people to, to, to aspire to achieve. And I think that's what Brit what's driving Brittany now. Um, so, Joe, we will see you again. I greatly look forward to it. Enjoy your time off. Uh, in the summer, watching those matches. It's a lot more fun watching them as they appear as opposed to <laughs> being... 13 and 4 is still not too bad. 
Not too bad at all. Uh, <laughs> watch Hot Fuzz, Joe. Grab a drink, watch Hot Fuzz. Absolutely. Oh, Congratulations on a match well played uh, in Sudden History. Second time a title match has gone to Sudden Deaths as we bring in the winner of it. Brittany, uh, I saw your little happy dance backstage. <laughs> I'm glad you could, uh, could get that out because that was a doozy. Um, mm-hmm. Absolutely incredible stuff. You took a huge risk betting on Phantom Quotes. It didn't pay off for you, but like I say to so many people, like when you're down and out, a veteran player shows that they can still keep their head in it and just wait for the right time. And you found the right time. It went a little longer maybe than you or Cody or Cody's blood pressure was hoping uh, <laughs> it, it would go. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, you did it. It's your second defense. You've beaten Joe twice. You two are – you and just the story of you and Joe, you two are even now. Um, yeah. I, I guarantee a fifth match will happen. Obviously, we can't force it to happen, but we don't really need to because when you and Joe are playing, yeah. it's kind of inevitable. Um Brittany, it's your second title defense. How are you feeling about winning it and the second ever title match to go to sudden death? I have a lot of words right now. I that was insane. It's crazy that both times I beat Joe, I had both times I had a moment where like, oh, I just messed it up where I missed the three pointer in filmography last time. Then I come back and win it. Like what a what a wave of emotions I went through in both wins against him. Um, yeah, I. I don't have a lot of words, guys. I'm super excited. Joe, he's amazing. We, have, we both make each other better, and this is why the best matches are me and Joe because we're the best and we make each other the best. So I look forward to uh, part five. I'll make sure I'm still the champion when he's back. I'm sure of that. <laughs> um, and, yeah, no, I just feel great. I wish I had more to say, but, like, whew, this was – this was yeah, yeah. I'm sure Cody is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's good that you don't have a lot of words because I have a ton. Um, Listen, um, there's a few things that happened. One, I was going to own the loss if it happened because I think as a manager in this league, like you have to be the one to tell your player like what to bet. I know they know themselves better, but like you have to make that judgment call. And I let her make the judgment call of betting two on quotes. But as I kept telling myself, there are four more questions. It just takes him to miss one, and he has before. So let's just do that. And when he decided to open the door for us and we decided to kick the damn thing down, like, it's just you don't give her an opportunity to tie. And he knew the answer. Like, that's the thing. Like, I that's what the turn of event, that was exactly what happened. And we talked to ourselves. We we're like, oh, we might want to spin first. There was moves that we knew we shouldn't have made, but we made. Like, he should have went first. He should have got yeah. that. We would have done it just as well. We would have killed Marvel as well. And we just – little errors that we were making to ourselves during this match is what – but the door was open. And in basketball, we kind of like the ball never lies. Like, the free throws were still hitting. We were still making our shots. So we were still in this game. So it was going to happen. Um, she's just – she's just awesome. She's uh, confident throughout. She doesn't per- mean show it all the time because she gets nervous in situations. But she's like, oh, I don't really want scores and soundtracks. Nine for ten. Um, she gets in category situations that ah, I have to know have repeats. I just have to go to my board and make sure it's done. It just happens. Uh, Joe's a great player. Joe will never um, not be one of the all time greats. Um, he got me back to managing. He got me to manage Brittany at this situation. I've told Brittany how great she was. This is now our second defense. Now the next one, we don't have to face Joe right away, so that's nice. I'm really yeah. excited because I don't like these matches as much as everybody, as the, much as the audience mm-hmm. likes them. But um, yeah, she's just she's just a dominant force, and uh, she's only going to get better. And like again, that first match that they had probably did not live up to the marquee name of both of them by standards of like accuracies. This one, I think, made up for the make up for it. Um, so yeah, super proud of her. Can't wait for more and that bell didn't go in anywhere in the fifth one. So we're just we'll be ready for that time too. Speaking of more, there is a lot of talk of, of Joe Brittany five and, and I'm on record now as saying I think it will happen, but you do have to go through a couple other things, possibly in order to make that happen. Your very next thing, Brittany, uh, you're going to be defending your belt against the winner of the tournament the very tournament that got you your first title shot. Uh, against Joe last year. Uh, so you'll have the winner of the Summer Series Tournament. Literally, we've already announced it. One of 27 people could be uh, your next challenger. So who that you obviously know of some people in that. I can imagine what your answer might be, but who in that tournament are you expecting uh, to maybe see it? I mean, 
Do I do I talk or do you talk? The political answer will want to see the Phoenix Club. Like yeah. Amaru, Jake, Tyler. It doesn't matter who comes out of that group. We want to see one of them because it's a win-win within the faction. If you want my honest answer, the easiest person lying in the tournament, whoever the third the twenty-seven seed, I would gladly take them against Brittany. Um, that's just my honest answer. I and also this will be the great news because I think if Joe comes back, he's not going to be automatically in the title match this time. So he's got to face a normal general Joe in a three round match, and that man hasn't played a three round match in a very long time in singles. So that could be the evening tool too. But no, either that anybody in the tournament, I'm excited to sit back and watch the tournament and manage who I have to manage in that tournament. But it's going to be chaos. Uh, triple threats are never fun for the managing side of it. But we'll take whoever out of that because she'll be ready. Because she won't be playing, she'll be studying. So, Great. Well, Brittany, congratulations on your second title defense. And in my opinion, I think I've already decided, you know, you versus Joe one was great. The triple threat, me, Tim, and Scully was great. I think I've already decided this is probably my favorite title match of all time. Um, one of the best yeah. uh, at the very least. So congratulations on coming out uh, on the other side of it. And we'll see you in your next one. Tim. What a title match size throw <laughs> on it. Ugh. Uh, sorry, I had to call you. Uh, <sighs> Fandom Fights 2023. <laughs> Crazy shit. Crazy shit. Uh, we'll see you guys with the tournament. We got it coming up. Uh, like Nick said, three uh, person matches, all tournament. Oof. Triple threats, I guess they call that. Uh, so it's going to be pretty crazy. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, it's gonna be really fun to see the tournament uh and the frenzy coming up and also uh just everything else that these players do so thank you guys thank you to nick for writing this one i've been tim we'll see you guys next time bye and again that's the hero gig part of the journey is the end goodbye old friend Giddy has to go.